Cartoon Classics. you don't get one cent if you harm any animals, especially wabbits. You're free now with the wabbit. Go and womp and frolic in the forest. Oh boy, I'm rich. Okay, fellas, break it up, break it up. Three million dollars. <sighs> Lara angel in the sky. Lara da 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 I'm just an angel in the sky. Please, Mr. Wabbit, go on back to the forest where you belong. Be a nice with the wabbit. Ooh, ouch, ouch! Hey, what are you trying to do? Kill me? Are you fracture my skull? I'm gonna call a Kaloey, that's what I'm gonna do. Operator, operator! Hey, you got a nickel? Hello, operator, operator! Give me walnut tree, tree! Oh, that's you, Mert? How's every little thing? Please, Mr. Wabbit, don't call Uncle Wooey. I won't hurt you again, I promise. Well, okay, but watch your step after this fat boy. Hey, what do you got to eat around this joint? Eat? Eat? I'll fix this guy. Fate he'll twick me, huh? Step right this way. That'll fix him. <laughs> Why the dirty double crossing? Open up! <coughs> hey, I'm getting pneumonia! <coughs> Open up! <coughs> I'll die! I'll die! No! I'm too young to die! Please! Please let me in! Hey, 
this in order to get me the Academy Award. <sighs> Say goodbye to Uncle Louie for me. Oh. Uncle Louie? What have I done? We million dollars all shot to pieces. Don't die with the rabbit. <laughs> Please don't die. Walk a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows your cradle. Come on, that stuff. Swing it. Walk a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will walk. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Down will come, baby. Special delivery. Your Uncle Willie has kicked the bucket. You now inherit three million dollars. Inheritance tax, two million defense tax, big check county, which leaves you owing us one dollar and ninety-eight cents. Please remit. You don't get the dough, Aunt Butterball. No, but I'm gonna get you. Yes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
How about a little kiss there, beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> I seen this done in a feature picture once.
this peaceful island crowned by the great volcano Mount Mauna Kea occurred the mightiest eruption that ever shook the earth, burying the beautiful city beneath it in molten lava and creating destructive tidal waves that raced around the world. For 300 years this mighty volcano lay dormant. A new and more beautiful city sprang up at its base. But now, after centuries of inactivity, slight tremors are being felt. At the Bureau of Meteorology, a group of scientists watchfully check delicate instruments to determine the seriousness of this renewed activity. you to send me some real stories. Now here are your steamship tickets and here are your press passes. You'll need these down there. Goodbye, good luck, and for Pete's sake, see if you two can work together for a change. Right, Chief. So long. Say, Lois, do you have my press pass? What makes you think I've got it? Sorry, sir, but you'll have to get one down at headquarters. Thanks. Uh, you go on ahead, Lois, and I'll join you later. Now, what did I do with that? Poor Clark. Too bad he lost his pass. indications, we can expect things to start popping at any time. In order to save the city, 
we've decided to blast the higher rim of the crater, thereby diverting the flow of lava away from the city and into the ocean below. Is the chief in? I'd like to see him about a press pass. Uh, he'll be back shortly. Won't you have a seat? Thanks. Wait here. Hello? Hello? Send up that car. Hello? 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 Miss Lane? How's the story coming, Lois? Oh, fine, Clark. Too bad you weren't in on it. Maybe I would have been if I hadn't lost my past.
Congratulations, old pal. Best man won. Gee, thanks, Bluto. <laughs> I shall return at three o'clock sharp, all dressed in me wedding duds. See you later, Popeye. Gosh, this sure is hard water. It's just a pinch ought to do the trick. <laughs> well, there's the hurries if I was to be on time. Uh -oh.
I'll dig and dig and dig and dig, I'll never get enough. I twamp the prairies and the plains, I twudge each weary mile. I'll twamp and twudge and twudge and twamp until I make my pile. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I'm gonna dig up lots of gold, V for victory. Hi, neighbor. Oh, hello. I'm a wagon, wagon, wubber of the wild and woolly west. Of all the things I haven't got, I white gold the best. Oh, it rained all night, the day I wept, the weather is so dry. It was so warm, I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, and don't you cry for me. I'm gonna get me lots of gold before victory. Good evening, a friends. Hey, there's something awfully schooly going on around here. What's up, Doc? Well, one of the strangest things, I... Hey, smart boy. <laughs> That's that schooly rabbit. Oh, well. Plenty of you men wear one of these. That's the West War. I'll get that weapon. Hey, Doc. 
Hey, Doc, where are you?
Cats hate... Uh, <clears throat> cats love water. And goldfish hate cats. See what's cooking.
This is a job for Superman. gets her story. And luckily, she lives to write it. Thanks to Superman. Not today, thank you. Cause I'm gonna wash them. That's why not today, thank you. Oh, yeah. Look at these dirty yeah, women. I wonder how that mud got clear up here on the twentieth floor. <laughs> that guy thinks he's gonna ruin my racket, hey? Hmm. Hey, let me show you the real way to wash a window. I'll wash them. <laughs> Oh, right in the eye. Oh, I can't see. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, you're out of date with that stuff. 
Let me show you how we modern music. Here's a little whipped cream on the window. Let me put it in the machine. There you are. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Hey, shrimp, get an eye full of this. Have some real window clearance. You don't say. You look like a monkey on a string to me. Pardon oh. me. Oh, hey, I'm hanging in the healthy tube. Hey, you'll have to knock somebody off sometime. Ah, that's kindergarten stuff. Will you get a load of this with me suspenders? I'll show you how to do it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I do it in swing time, you see. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah. watch this. Yeah, I'm watching you, but of course I don't see anything yet. Oh! 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 Oh, oh I'm falling, I'm falling. Oh! Oh! Uh, 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 uh. Whoa! Hey! Hey, my head's caught, I can't get out. Oh! Hey, get me out of here, somebody. Hey, you get me a pain in the neck, you. Oh! 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 Why, you little Oh, the head, I'm from my head. Oh, right, right, huh? Oh, Where do I think I'm going to have a lot of stuff? Wow! Well, wait, give me that sledgehammer. Open it, open it, open it. There's a ladder over there. Oh, whoa! Whoa, no, 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 Take it easy, Rover. It's 
that's no way to retrieve a duck. Look. <laughs> Gentle like. See, Laramore? Hello. Sorry I had to plug you, Mr. Duck, but I'm a sportsman. A great, great sportsman. <laughs> a great sportsman, eh? Sportsman. Listen, sport, you don't know the meaning of fair play. What chance has a poor, helpless, fluffy, little winged creature like me against you? You with your bullets, and your shotgun, and your knife, and your dip call, and your hunting coat, and your hunting dog, and all kind of stuff like that there. What protection have I got? A bulletproof vest, I suppose. <laughs> How does that get there? How would you like to meet me in a fair fight, Mr. Sport? All things being equal, man to man, Marquis of Queensbury rules. Huh? Huh. That's different, eh? Yeah, that's something else again. Yeah, you don't like that, do you, sportsman? No. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like it. Yeah. In that corner. <laughs> In that corner. <laughs> He's a dog. <laughs> you can have him. <laughs> what a tramp. <laughs> That outstanding exponent of clean sportsmanship, the champion of champions, your friend and mine, our own, our beloved Daffy, good to his mother, Duck. Now, boys, fight clean. stuff. None of this. Or this. Or this. Or like so. Or this. Or this. Or this. You understand? Yeah, you mean uh, none of this? Or this? Or like so? Or this? Or this? Or this? Or this? Or this? Huh? How about a little of this? Absolutely, uh-uh. You know, there's something awfully screwy about this fight. Or my name isn't Larimore. And it isn't. You got him punchy, champ. He's practically a dead duck already. Now get in there, fight. Go on in there and knock him out. Give it to him, champ. Let him have it, champ. Hmm, getting a little thin on top. How about a little something to stimulate the scalp? Now shake hands. Which hand do you take? Mm, uh, that one. Nope. Wrong. Guess again. All right, all right. I'll take that over there. <laughs> Ain't he a dope? You sure this is the one you want? <laughs> You're right! He's the right one! And here's round one coming up. One, three, nine, ten, you're out! The winner and new champion, Daffy Duck! Not the one to complain, Mr. Wefferee, but I thought you said no woof stuff. None of this. 
or this, or this, or like so, or this, or this, or this. That's all, folks. an officer, assault and battery, trespassing, disturbing the peace, miscellaneous misdemeanors, public nuisance, traffic violations, going through a boulevard stop, jaywalking, triple parking, conduct unbecoming to a wabbit, nice looking chap, oh. violating traffic regulations. Tension! Why, look at you. You call yourself a Maori. You're a disgrace to the regiment. I'm gonna drum you out of the service.
Come on out of there or I'll fill you full of wet. No more bullets. <laughs> Come on, buck up. Don't cry. I'll give myself up. Here, take me in. You really mean it? It's not another twig. No, go ahead, snap him on. Okay, Doc, let's go. Ready, Mr. Wabbit? Yeah, go ahead, Doc. I'm ready. Before you die, you can make one last wish. Yeah? Well, uh, let's see now. Um, I wish, um, I wish, um, I wish I was in Dixie. Hooray! Hooray! Oh, the camel come always sing this song. Do that, do that. The camel come always track by my long. Fantastic, isn't it? Wind the run all night, wind the run all day. I'll bet my money on a bob tail night. But a hot cornet can boop, boop, do. Like Betty Boop can do A saxophone can go But a saxophone can boop, boop, do. Like Betty Boop can do This little miss would never miss A chance for vocal tuning And anytime and anywhere You can hear this lady crooning An auto horn can go But an auto horn can boop, boop, do. Like Betty Boop can do Made of pen and ink, she can win you with a wink. Ain't she cute? Boop, boop, boop. Sweet Betty. Sand. Concentrate. Concentrate. I will now bear the naked truth of your baby day. Bound for a foreign land. Thank <laughs> you. 
by myself in the morning. All by myself in the night. I am alone, not a single soul is near. So unhappy. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. All by myself. crazy about aviators. I bike away with one goodbye. I'll live all. Oh. <laughs> My prettiest engagement. <laughs> Signals, money. 
changes. Food!
we are at one of the country's most interesting zoos. Here we find the wolf in his natural setting. Next, a pack of camels. A North American Greyhound. And here, two bucks and five cents. And here, two friendly elks. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. No zoo would be complete without a monkey cage. Mother Nature's own weatherman, the little groundhog, and his shadow. Over here, we find... <laughs> hey, uh, hey, hey, don't annoy that lion. It's dangerous. Can't you read that sign? You'd better take my advice and leave him alone. Shame, shame. You're a bad boy. The skunk cage is always a center of interest. Well, we're lucky. It's feeding time for the giraffe. This is the second time I've had to speak to you. Leave that lion alone. I'm warning you. I'm a bad boy. And here we come to a family of white rabbits. Of course, you all know how fast they multiply. <laughs> Now, over here in the birdhouse, we find the wise old owl. Who? You. Me? Yes. Ooh. An interesting bird is the South African talking parrot. Polly want a cracker? <clears throat> I said, uh, Polly want a cracker? Nah, give me a short beer. Another interesting bird is the Alcatraz jailbird. I didn't do it, I tell you. Okay, I'm afraid, see? Yeah, I'm innocent. I want to see the DA. They can't do this to me, see? They can't hang this on me. I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it, I tell you. Oh, he did so do it. I saw him with my very own eyes. So there. Over here, we find Mother Ostrich on her nest. have something to crow about. Oh, 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 look out, look out. Well, a jackpot. <laughs> for the last time, you'd better stop annoying that line if you know what's good for you. I'm a bad boy. New to the zoo is an elephant just in from Africa. Hello. 
Express Company. This is Joe Jumbo. We'll send it up right away. You know, those guys have had my twunk for a week. And here we have, uh, well, <laughs> these are some things we had left over from that last New Year's party. Pacing back and forth in their cage, we find two restless panthers. Bread and butter, 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 bread and butter. Well, here we have J. Wellington Buttonhook. Mr. Buttonhook used to thrill thousands at the circus by putting his head in a lion's mouth. In this cage, we find the Rocky Mountain Wildcat. Hey, Bud, hey, hey, just a minute, Bud. Tell me, just what made you wild? What made me wild? What made me wild? Well, I'll tell you. They called my name out at bank night, and I wasn't there! Well, I guess that little fellow finally took my advice and went home. Remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. time you showed up. Come on, come on, hand it over. Okay, boss. Here it is. This is a swell racket, boss. And the Superman outfit, it works like a charm. Gee, boss, it was only a fin. Next time, it'll be a Mickey Finn. Friend turns foe. Well, that's ridiculous. It couldn't be Superman. What do you make of it, Clark? Hey, you two. The editor wants you to cover the opera tonight. And don't forget, it's formal. Good. Now I can wear my new evening gown. Oh. 
in for some trouble. Enjoy the opera? What's the matter, stupid? Did you lose your tongue? Don't stand there like a dummy. Give me the jewels. Are you trying to double-cross me? Why, you... Hey, boss, that's Mr. Superman. Well... I uh, didn't expect to see you here.
the show in captivity, folks. Step right up, no crowding, no pushing. The greatest show for children as well as people alike. For only one ticket, and that's for the and it's so funny, I have to laugh myself. <laughs> now you better Come hurry. Over here, this is the one. Don't pay any attention to that phone. See this right show? Right here, this folks, is going on a Oh, Step right up, hey, mister. Only one hey, seat left. One seat you. left. Hey, Step right up. How many? You get do six pennies for a nickel here. Oh yeah. You get seven pennies for a nickel here. <sighs> Did anybody say eight? Not me, brother. Let me show you a sample. Oh yeah. I seen a voice right over here. There's the greatest show of the. <clears throat> Come right <clears throat> in. Here's my. <clears throat> Come here. I got something here I want you to see. Here's a scene from one of me pictures. To view this masterpiece, would you load me a penny? For which I will gladly pay you back Tuesday. Okay. Here you are. Thank you, sir. Who's that knocking at my door? Oh, you kid. Moving, man. Hello, tall, tubby, and terrific. Coochie, coochie, coo. Oh. 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 For which I will gladly pay you back Tuesday. Oh yeah, well I'll think it over, you fella. Here you are. This was on you. the house. Huh? There we are. <laughs> there goes that jitter mug now. Huh? He thinks he knows a lot about trucking, but I'll show him a thing or two. Huh? Ah. Voice movement from not paying the rent. Can't play light up on this one. There we go. <laughs> no, it's given a twist of ball. No, 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 it's not satisfactory at all. I do not consider it worth the money. What are you talking about? That's one of the best pitches we ever made. You don't know what's good. This guy started on a shoestring and he's going to end the same way. That's all I... Young, all right with me. Uh, uh, Gave that guy a good license that time. <laughs> now here's a picture which is a picture. Uh, you pay me Tuesday, huh? Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, batter up, batter up. Here we go. <laughs> right one. <laughs> Why am 
must we always fight? Can't we be friends? Oh, oh you want to make friends, huh? Oh, that's all right with me. Let my girls be my girls. Oh, share and share like be good neighbor. That's what I am. Oh, hey, <laughs> Even though you're all in my living, last 
Afraid of that fire water? Eh, hey, don't be silly. I just watch me, kid, and I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> I just cinch.
see how easy it is? Now, I got an idea. Hey, come here, kid. And I'll tell you how you can do the same thing. Hey, come here. Now, uh, here's what you do. You, uh, you go over there in the front of the mine. Let's deliver the suit now. Besides, after you've got your walk, don't get high, squabber. See you once. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're all set, kid. Now, uh, you go in there and do your stuff. I'll see you later. Good luck. for dinner. I think I'll go in and have a little snack. Hey, cut it off. I'm the bee. Oh, I'm the bee. Cut it off. I got a sting on you. Oh, oh, I got a sting. Hey, what are you doing? Remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. series of baffling crimes, the body of an elderly man has just been found in the marsh flats outside the city. He has been identified as the watchman at the Metropolis Munitions Plant. There's a story, or I'm no reporter. He is believed to be the victim of an organized ring of saboteurs. More news later. Huh, sounds like there might be a story at the plant, Lois. Lois? Me name is Lois, not Lois. Gee whiz, everybody interpolates me name wrong. It's Lois. L-O-U-I-S. Lois, er, uh, uh, Louise, er, uh, Lucy. Now I'm so mixed up, I don't know who I am. Okay, Watchman, take your post in the main shop. 
and be on the alert. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, pardon me. Upstairs, 12 o'clock. Very important. Report upstairs, 12 o'clock. Very important. I wonder what the big shot wants. Good job you did on the watchman last night. Now, uh, how about that dynamite charge under the shops? It's wired to the switch on the plant floor below. But the new watchman pulls that switch tonight, the whole Shh. place will... Get that girl. Load in the dynamite. Jones speaking. Hello, Jones. Send out the torpedo immediately. Immediately. Here comes the torpedo now. And that old hulk out there is a target. Naturally, for experimental purposes, there is no explosive in the torpedo. Okay, stand by. Ready? Lane, are you all right? Superman, they're about to blow up the plant. Hurry, throw that switch.
Superman put an end to their little act, and this puts an end to yours, Clark Kent.
Please, what a please. Why, it's as pretty as a picture. But if I ever told my favorite wife the awful truth, I'd land right on the front page. Yes, sir, read Bobby. Cigars, cigarettes, butts. Oh, hello, Gailey. Why, sure, I'll buy some of your cigarettes. You got a light, kid? <laughs> hello, Anne. How's the aunt girl tonight? Oomph, 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 oomph. Oomph. Good evening, Mr. Wise Mola. You mugs, this job is plenty risky, get me? You gotta be tough guys to go through with it. Because if you get caught, you take your rap alone, see? Mm -hmm. All right, now let's try it. Listen, Muggs, one tie, all tie. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're all enjoying this little hoedown. Comes now a bit of the... Get away from me, boys, you bother me. Here comes now a bit of the dance. And if you'll all gather around, Brother Stokotsky will give out with the helping of that South American jive. Laconga, to be exact, so make it mellow, fella. Jimmy, that rhythm does something to me. Let's dance, will you, please? All uh, uh, sir, it's not that I don't want to. You understand? It's, uh, it's on account of that. Oh, she was. I don't know any of these modern steps here. Oh, come on, Jimmy, please. For me? Oh, sir, I, uh, uh, oh, heck, I guess I might as well try it. I'm gonna lose my
fifty dollars. Dad. Yes, Andy? I'd like to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. Don't go away, folks. This ought to be good. Comes now the feature attraction of the evening. Uh, keep moving, boys. I'll see you at the track. Here comes now the feature attraction of the evening, Miss Sally Strand and her bubble dance. Now, if you boys will put away your bean shooters, we'll get on with the show. Such a beautiful bubble since I was a child. Henry! Henry Panda! Coming, Mother. Listen, babe, I've been bad a few words, see? I've been chasing you all night. Now, how about a little kiss, baby? Well, fancy meeting you here. Thank you. 
Dr. Jerko, a duck. Calling Dr. Jerko, a duck. Calling Dr. Hey, Jerk! Yes? Duck! Next day, a day, an update with the hiccups day. Oh, a customer, uh, a patient. I'll be right out. Try the scare cure. That's what we'll do. Yes. Boo. 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 Ooh. Some. Ew! You say, who are you? Yeah, boo, I'm Chloe. Unless you and me wrestle. Chloe? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chloe. Happy birthday to you. Stop. Sign Frankenstein. That'll be 36 cents, please. <laughs> When you hear the tone, the time will be exactly 10 2. Well, you're cooking with gas. That sounds good. Oh, jump a time. Stop! Stop that lazy, sluggish feeling. Truck. There they go! It's Rose O'Day. No! It's up.
the streak of lightning. More powerful than the pounding surf. Mightier than a roaring hurricane. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. poisoning Dr. Jordan, yet you admit these fingerprints are yours. Yes, but, but you don't. That's all. Can't speaking. Hello, Daily Planet. This is Dr. Wilson of the Egyptian Museum. I've just uncovered something that may free Miss Hogan. Yes, Doctor. Uh, I, I've been feeling much better lately, but I'll be right over. I'll see you later, Lois. Doctor's orders. Doctor, my eye. Dr. Jordan was the world's foremost student of hieroglyphics. Most of our priceless specimens were brought back by him even the mummy of King Tush. Among his possessions, I uncover this ancient Egyptian tablet and find it to be a secret curse of the tomb of King Tush. He who disturbs the eternal sleep of King Tush shall perish. This tablet may well be Miss Hogan's passport to freedom. Come with me, please. Three thousand years ago, the valley of the Upper Nile was ruled by an old and powerful king. He had been warring with the Lower Nile for many years, and just before the old king died, he called his son to him, the young boy of twelve. He commanded his giant guards to wear an oath of eternal allegiance to the boy prince to guard him constantly in this world and the next. Shortly after, the old king died. The youth of twelve now ruled the kingdom of ten million people. But the boy was not fashioned for such responsibility, and being of a sickly nature, soon became ill himself. Never was a person attended more faithfully than this youth, yet he withered away and soon died. True to their oath of allegiance, each of the royal guards drank poison, so that they might continue to protect the spirit of their young king in the Valley of the Dead. Here in these catacombs, Dr. Jordan has reconstructed the burial vault exactly as he first discovered it in one of the pyramids. Working for years in absolute and frenzied secrecy, he finally duplicated an ancient mystic formula which he called the fluid of life. Just before he was found dead, Dr. Jordan had inoculated each of the mummies of the giant guards. They were supposed to return to life but somehow the test failed. Dr. Jordan was found here at the feet of King Tush. The rest you know. But what you don't know, Mr. Kent, and what I am equally certain of, is that Dr. Jordan violated the ancient warning by attempting to open the coffin of King Tush.
poisonous needle. That's how Dr. Jordan was killed. Yes, and Miss Hogan is a free woman. Incidentally, who told you I was at the museum? My mummy done told me.
Let's get out of here. Ah, here it comes again. Where? 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 Step right up, mate. Don't hesitate. Ring the bell and win a box of sweets for your sweetie. Oh, I just love strong men. Yeah? Then watch this. He bends spikes with his naked teeth, folks. Each and every muscle of his Herculean physique vibrates. How would you like me to show you around the fair? Oh, I just love the ride. about fixing me up with a kiss. You keep your hands to you. That's what you are. Help! Popeye, get me out of here! Help! Popeye, hurry!
confidentially, folks. I ain't going south this winter. I'm going to stick around and check up on this winter business. <laughs> You'll be sorry! <laughs> eh, I should be sorry. <laughs> I got the whole lake to myself! Good. Get a load of this. This will kill you. This will kill you. Ice. Snow. Snowfly, don't bother me. Snowfly, don't bother me. Some soup or consomme, our chowder's good today, a tea bone bordelay, what is your order? You love our new green peas, our shrimp and cheddar cheese, and cherry if you please, a dear border. Do try our bologna, a slice of salami, some vitamins A, B, just place your order. We have a candy yam, a moving picture ham, our short ribs of spring lamb, our shorter. Of buttered buns we boast, do try our free French toast, an orange sherbet roast, give us your order. And with that tucked away, you'll know that that ain't hay. That ain't hay, brother. A vessel. Ooh la la la. Ooh la la la. Ooh la la la. Ooh la la la. And now for our dessert. Uh oh. Now, fellas, wait a minute. Not that. You don't want to eat me. I I'm not a duck anyway. I'm a pigeon. <sighs> I'm a hummingbird, listen! <laughs> Fourth floor, clocks, locks, socks, smocks, and lands. 
I said that, didn't I? <laughs> Fine morning. Time to get up now. Gotta get him up. <laughs> Getting late. Can't sleep all day, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> Can't sleep all day. No, no. I don't sleep all day myself. <laughs> Insomnia. <laughs> Who threw that? Who wants to know? Why don't you bounce? 
bounce that ball off his dome. I've been dreaming and scheming a way to escape. As the warden and guards, they all bore me. Life in prison was never meant for me. Although I hate, I said I hate to leave my cell, a mateys. A sorry, a so very, very, very sorry, warden dear. Have a time a screaming from here. And now I am going to go. Yes, I am going to scram. Ah, oh, yes, I'm going to go. I'm going to scram. I'm going to take it on the lamb. A go! Nice voice, great possibilities, fine boy, fine boy. He's gone, he's gone, he escaped. Why don't somebody do something, do something? Say, that's a good idea, maybe I can do something. Sure. <laughs> In the endless reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. 
Their civilization was far advanced and had brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space, landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the child grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound, the infant of Krypton is now the man of steel, Superman! To best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for true justice, Superman has assumed the skies of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. of this fool masquerade. I shall be glad when I'm finished with my work here. Uh, Capitaine, the submarine fleet commander is impatient for news of the American convoy. He will be advised of its location shortly. To your post, my still. Lieutenant. Lieutenant Fleming. Miss Lane. Yes? Here, take these. Important papers. Destroy them. Ah, American stubbornness. I give you just ten minutes to remember what you did with those papers or I will be forced to brighten your memory with fire. So! So what? Das ist genug! That's fine. I warned you, Fräulein. Unless you talk, I will make no effort to interfere with these natives. Oh, cut the comic opera stuff. Very well. like they're having a party down there. And us not invited. How do you like that? What's that? It's Fleming ship. Empty. I wonder.
Lois. Stay down, Lois. department goes on to say that during this action an entire fleet of Axis submarines was destroyed by American dive bombers, affording the troop ships a safe crossing. For the mighty mission, praise the Lord, and pass the ammunition and will be... Gonna get our truck in there, pal. Just leaves it to me, chum. Oh, you're a fast one. 
Oh, yeah? Watch me back. Why, that little show-off. Get a load of this, babe. child again, just for tonight. And between these covers, we find these immortal favorites. Sleeping Beauty. Remember the lovely princess who was bewitched into a deep slumber until her Prince Charming came to break the spell? his name because he was no bigger than a man's thumb. Let's pay this interesting family a visit. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Thumb. Where's little Tom? Are you Tom Thumb? Uh, 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 yeah, that's me. Uh, Why, I thought you were no bigger than a man's thumb. 
How did you get so big? Uh, vitamin B1. <laughs> The Grasshopper and the Ant. The story of the industrious little ant and the lazy grasshopper. climbed a beanstalk, only to be met at the top by a ferocious two-headed giant who forced Jack to run for his life. Why did you quit? Uh, he's been sick. <laughs> the wolf in sheep's clothing, the fifth columnist of his day. By means of a disguise, he preyed upon unsuspecting little sheep. <laughs> Nights gave us the story of Aladdin and his wonderful lamp. All Aladdin had to do was to rub the lamp and presto, the genie appeared. I dream of genie with the light brown hair. kid again. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> what a joy. <laughs> hey, young fella. You're going to yell wolf once too often. Hey, go on, go on. Mind your own business. Mind your own business. Can't a guy have a little fun? A session in the woodshed wouldn't do that boy any harm. And here's a bird you wouldn't mind having in your own home. A goose that lays golden eggs. Hey, wait a minute. You're supposed to lay golden eggs. Not anymore, brother. I'm doing my bit for national defense. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her poor dog a bone. Why, you dirty 
double crossing. Food hoarder! She's a food hoarder! Food hoarder! Remember this little nursery rhyme? This little piggy <laughs> went for to market. This little piggy has gone for to stay home. This little piggy has had roast beef and smashed potatoes. And this poor little piggy, he don't have anything, all kinds of things to eat. And this little piggy has for to cry like anything. Wee, 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 all the way. For crying out, Pete's sake, Mother, be careful, my corn! Cinderella and her glass slipper. The little girl Oh! Whoa! Help! Help, somebody! Help! Uh-uh. She's at it again. Whoa! Whoa! Help! Help the wolf! Good night's rest. Thank you. 
Daisy. Why, that double-crossing fair snatcher.
now that's what I call a peaceful, contented nursery.
Mrs. John McRoger, Airman First Class. That blissful smile on John's face is because John has reached the end of his first hitch, and John is getting out. He is now contemplating the advantages that all civilians take for granted, like a solid gold jagalack, a penthouse overlooking the river, a good job, and a beautiful wife. And to pants to send home to me wife, poor wife, no cares have I to grieve me, no pretty little coil to deceive me. Uh -huh. happy Here it comes, the message. As we go rolling, hi Mac, rolling home. Name is Grogan, technical gremlin, voice class. Yeah, yeah, I know, and you're here to show me why I should re-enlist. About all the multitudinous advantages accruing to the re-enlistee. Look, Buster, I don't know what all the trick sarcasm is about, but I'm getting out of this man's Air Force. Capital O, capital U, capital T. Out! Hey, you getting out too? Wait, that's different. Let's pick up our discharge papers together, uh, uh buddy. Are you kidding? Why, the minute they start talking to you, you'll go all soft and sign up again. But I... Shut up. Sit down. Honest, I've been dreaming about getting out ever since I got in. All these guys are the same. Pushovers. Wild blue yonder pushovers. I don't know why I'm so soft-headed, but I guess I gotta brief this character so he won't be a patsy and get talked back in. <laughs> These G.I. magic wands, always fouled up. Later, later. Now then, the first thing they're gonna try to do they're gonna try to tell you how much better off you'll be staying in the Air Force. Okay, just for the record, let's take a look. That's you, and that's your re-enlistment paycheck. Airman voice class, four years service, 137 bucks and 59 cents a month. And this is what the average veteran of your age is earning in civilian life. 253 bucks and 47 cents. That's $115.88 more than you make, Mac. Why, that's an outrage. That's... that's... Of course, to be perfectly fair, the civilian does have to make uh, certain minor deductions from his paycheck that you don't. Uh, like food, lodging, clothes, higher income taxes, medical and dental bills, and life insurance. Uh, minor deductions like that there. Well, uh, it's only 197 bucks a month. Only. Another thing I uh, forgot to mention was that an airman can increase the size of his check by uh, seniority, advancement in rank, allowances, overseas duty, and flying duty, and as much as six times your monthly base pay for your first re-enlistment. But the civilian still makes more money! Sure, sure, and anyway, the money isn't the important thing, is it, Grogan? It's the job that counts. Brother, you are so right there. Today, we find John McRoger, apprentice trial fastwinder, happily at work. Hey, Mac, there you are. Hey, uh, there you are again. Okay, so you're a little lonely. That's natural. Uh, too bad they don't have soybus clubs for civilians. But wow, look at them fancy duds. Nothing like pride in your appearance. <laughs> Grogan, it, it just doesn't seem quite what I want to do. Look, pal, you can't back out now. Why, why now, uh, you take a retirement. Do you realize that as a civilian, you can look forward to retiring at the age of 65 with a cool 85 bucks coming in from Social Security every month? 
Yeah? Well, in the Air Force, I can retire when I'm 38 and draw down 137 bucks a month for the rest of my life. What are you, a has-been or something? Where do they get off retiring you at 38? It's an imposition. Some imposition. Okay, I decide I don't want to be imposed on. I decide I'm going to stay in another 10 years, till I'm 48. Then they really impose on you. $229 a month. And, and Grogan, I've already got four years done. Well, uh, you can retire on that kind of dough as a civilian, too. Oh, absolutely. All I gotta do is I gotta save up about 90,000 bucks and put it out at 3% interest. A cinch. All right. Yeah, I know, I know. You save 60 bucks a week for 30 years. Okay, okay, so it's ridiculous. I'll admit there's a few good things about the Air Force. Like 30-day paid vacations. And medical expenses and a 10000 buck insurance policy thrown in. And family allowances. And housing. And free education. <laughs> You know something else, Mac? Us guys in the Air Force know more than anybody else in the whole world how to keep these beautiful crates flying. Okay, okay, I've been briefed enough. Let's get going. Yeah, I guess we both know what you want to do now. Right? Right. Look, Buster, if you think you can get by in the Air Force without me, you got yourself another thing coming. I guess I'll drift down to the old sugar bowl and scare up the old gang. Okay? Okay. Hey, gang! Old Ralphie's back!
Hello, Maisie? Hello, Hazel? What? Hello, Jeanette? Married? Hi, Barbara. Going out with your mother-in-law? Linda? Grandma? Hello, Betty? No. Marge? Husband? What's wrong, anyway? Everybody... Everything seems different. I... I wonder what my old GI buddies are doing. I wonder if... If I ought to re -enli Don't say it! Don't even think it! You're too smart, Ralphie boy. Got a light? <sighs> and besides, I'm here to help you. You ain't got no more troubles. Here, hold this. Now, I just happen to have here... Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 sense into that boyish head of yours. Now, uh, first thing you gotta do is... Huh? Look, Ralphie, ignore this joker. He's in the pay of you-know-who. Here, give me a drag off that thing. All we want is the facts, man. Facts, eh? I'll fax you, buster. This is what the average civilian in your age bracket earns a month. You may fire when ready, grizzly. Need I say more? That's over a hundred bucks difference. family allowances, of course, and automatic raises, and foreign service pay, and promotions. Sure, sure, but uh, uh, look what you gotta do for all that dough. Slosh around in the mud all day. And you can pick your career before you re-enlist. Re-enlist? Are you nuts? We ain't re-enlisting in nothing. We, uh, we don't wanna look like no toy soldier. Look at these civilian clothes. Sharp, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, like I say. Uh, but we're gonna... We're gonna work our way through school nights. Study up. Be a big shot. While in service, of course. Don't be taken in, kid. We'll get ourselves a good job. Two weeks vacation every year at good old Lake Mossy Log. In the army, that is. So what? Who wants to live in a barracks all your life? Stick with me, kid. We'll live in luxury. Uh, government insured, of course. Okay, wise guy. Uh, uh, retirement. In the army. Or. Don't listen to him. We'll strike uranium in your backyard. We can invent something! Dehydrated water! Just add water! And with that fat bonus, too. Holy Guys, cow! Uh, Come on, of... hurry up! We'll inherit Fort Knox! We'll strike Earl! We'll invent the wheel! <laughs>
Cartoon Classics. 